through that. And the tool that can help us in doing that, if I click on this one here and go compare, whoop, see how it's made those changes in there? It's got the blue text to show what I've added in there. It shows what I've taken away. We'll do the same thing with the images and the links and other text in there. So that's very, very cool because if I do that, then I can see those changes that have occurred all the way over time. Good, so that's our wiki server. So I saw a grade four teacher use this to baseline, essentially. So they did, this was before they took the lesson in, well, gold in this case, look at what, what the assumptions were of the students and then taught based on the feedback they got. And uh, it was quite useful. While we're here, why don't we look at podcast producer? Because I've mentioned that. We've seen this collaborative tool. Have you got that up and going? Yes, I can. Um, we'll give that a go. Groovy. Now this is going to be based on material. I would have shown you if the network was working. I, I've set up uh, thinking I can make some money out of this. I've set up a university myself called Athoman University. So Americans can get away with it, I can. And there's uh, material there in a couple of disciplines. Uh, and we'll use some of the content that uh, is up on that website for podcast producer to see how we would use it as a workflow tool. Okay, so I've brought up another application that, again, is uh, new with Leopard and comes built in uh, with the system automatically. It's called Podcast Capture. Uh, and what this tool does is it's to automate the uh, creation of podcasts and integrates with Podcast Producer Server. Okay, so uh, an easy way of taking our content and submitting it to uh, the workflow. So we've got a couple of options here what we can do. Uh, we can do video, we can do just audio, uh, and with a podcast you might want to have one or the other. Uh, it's also very useful in that it does uh, screen share, uh, screen capturing. So if you're making, for instance, uh, some kind of help file uh, for people, so you're going step by step through on your screen showing what someone's going to do, you can capture that to a video. Uh, you can also take just a standard file as well. So if you've got pre-existing content, here's an easy way of throwing that through the, through the system. So uh, what we're going to do is make a video. Uh, and this is just using the built-in camera here uh, on my machine. Um, you could also have one that's uh, attached to the server or in, say, a lecture theatres. Quite often you'll have a camera that's automatically mounted uh, and managed remotely, and in which case it would integrate with that sort of stuff. Uh, in an advanced setting, you could even integrate that then with your timetabling or your re resource booking uh, and get that automated to automatically capture when someone comes in and out of the room. So I'm just going to record a couple of seconds of footage here just so we've got some content. So I'll get a countdown here. And hello, welcome to Atho's presentation today. I'm not going to go on too long because basically you don't want to see too much of my face and uh, it increases the amount of processing time that it would take, so I'm trying to get this done fairly quickly. So uh, we click the publish button now. And this is where we go away and add some metadata around this. So uh, you can see we are starting to build up some uh, information around um, what's actually happening with this piece of uh, content. So in the title here we would call this uh, Athoman's Presentation. Uh, as a description we could go Atho talking about education, learning and stuff. Uh, and we could also um, uh, go on and you could integrate that as well if you had some sort of, uh, again, scheduling thing. It could pull that information out and dump that in there straight away. So um, you can see how uh, I'm doing it manually here in an automated sense. That would be um, very, very easy to then have uh, the same content and the same metadata tagging across all your content. So it makes it very easy once you've built up a lot of content. Uh, and as you can see, if uh, we've done the iTunes U demo, it then makes it easy for students to search, for instance, on a lecturer's name or a date, things like that. So now that uh, we just got to look at the workflow that we're going to do. So this is what are we going to do with this uh, piece that we just recorded it. And there's a couple of options in here. Uh, which are built in, and obviously this is highly customizable as well, so uh, depending on your own institution, uh, you would have different options here, what you want to do, what kind of movie you want to make, uh, do you want to make it for an iPhone, or do you want to make it for a larger for the desktop, or burn it to a DVD, things like that. Uh, so what we're going to do here is uh, uh, the blog and the iTunes uh, with uh, intro. Okay, uh, so we're going to submit that now. So. 
podcast is being submitted. Now these little workflows we just saw, you can write them yourselves. Although the interface there looks really simple and I'd be comfortable with that, writing the workflows actually requires some geek speak. Uh, in fact, the Ruby on Rails language is what developers would use to write the workflow, so it's all Unix stuff under the hood. Um, but what the teacher would see, or the lecturer, um, is that sort of interface. So I won't show you the configuration behind that because it gets very uh, techy very quickly, as uh, Stephen said, um, but amazing amount of flexibility. So just about any sort of scripting that can be done on your computer can be brought into this workflow. So we also see people that can then integrate with uh, other learning management systems they might have. For instance, if you've got Blackboard uh, or something of that nature, you can integrate with that as well. So uh, that's gone away and it sent that file to the server which is now processing it. Okay, so it's doing that in the background. Want uh, throw another one, Adam? Yeah, what yeah. we'll do at the same time, this is a question that we get a lot of the time as well, is um, you're showing this on a Mac, what am I going to do with my PCs? And not to worry because Before we you have an alternative. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm going to now use uh, the web interface rather than using uh, podcast capture. So this is something that's accessible from a PC or a Linux box or uh, plenty of uh, mobile devices as well potentially. Uh, I'm going to log in here. I'm being Rowan today so um, if this all goes uh, terribly pear-shaped just remember Rowan, not my name. <laughs> So we've logged in and uh, now we get uh, a similar concept to what we had before in the previous application. Uh, what we're going to do here, uh, we could also record. Uh, what I'm going to do is submit a file this time. So uh, we've got a file here that uh, uh, Atho's gone away and made himself previously. So this could be some pre-existing content that we have. Uh, with this workflow, I'll just do the blog one, which will go through nice and fast that way. And again, we'll put in another title here, which is uh, Atho's presentation. And I'll say, uh, I submitted this via the web interface. And we'll go, hey, press submit. Yeah, okay, it's done that. So it's very, and this is all happening in a web browser. You can see a very nice interface. Uh, lots of use of um, Ajax, and it makes it almost like another application. Groovy. I'm going to leave that happen and move on to the other machine while that all processes. Another thing some folks ask is one is. Um, how fast is the processing? The beauty of it is because it's all Unix under the hood, you can actually use grid technology, which is high performance computing stuff. And if you have a pile of machines in a cluster or a lab of machines, actually each Mac has an, an X grid client on it, a grid client. You can actually use the downtime of the lab in your building to process different jobs. So you can actually get quite a production job going. Berkeley, who I said I'm going to see soon, so I, I can't say I've seen this, but I've been talking to the guys at Berkeley who tell me they've now got it down pat to seven minutes after a lecture's finished, it's up on the web as an audio file, and it's 20 minutes after that a video lecture is up on the web. So they've actually got piles of hardware thrown at it, and they've got it up as high definition video, which is overkill, really. But anyway, collaborative tools. Now we've been talking about C learning, collaborative learning. Back in 2003, the freebie software that I, in fact, this is the first time I used iChat on a Mac, which will work with AIM on, on the Windows side. Great stuff. I was in the US. I phoned up Jim, my son, and said, plug in your digital video camera, and we did a wonderful little bit of collaboration. But the new version allows you to take, take a real collaborative step forward, and that is control, with permission, a colleague's screen. So that you can, in this case, work on developing a web page, one colleague being in London, the other Monash, and you can control, Oliver can control the screen, and you can both work on a project together. So, you know, that's really important in not only teaching and learning, but of course research. Uh, some beautiful directions that tools are going. There's a whole pile of t uh, free tools out there too. Now, iChat's being used in teaching and learning, particularly in language. So, ANU and CQ up in Rockhampton, uh, using in the Japanese language classes here, iChat to talk to, how about authentic learning? Talk to folks in Osaka. 
So they are actually doing video conferencing. The Japanese students are working on their English, the English students are working on their Japanese, and they're getting great quality, assuming the network isn't tied down and that the ports are not locked down. So we've spoken about wikis and I'd just like to reiterate the strength of them. The strength really is that you have a revision history and we saw a great example of how you might use it in a classroom. So you can actually look at the history of the files. You can just use a browser to do it. You can create using, to, not using a, a very challenging uh, interface and you can also share calendars and blogs. So wiki uh, technology is quite powerful and one that I think we'll see more and more of as it comes down the line. Now I'm going to hope that that about now at least one of the files has come through. So I'm going to swap on over and let's see what's come through. Okay, so uh, now I've got uh, mail up on my machine and uh, it's uh, gone away and processed those files. It sent me an email as well, so I'll click on the first one here. So it's coming from the server. At the man's presentation, which is what we called it, uh, 11.45, May 30. Um, and that's been done and it's published it and it's given me the links there directly, okay? So, and it's got a couple of options there, video, audio, so depending on uh, what they're going to do with uh, this and how they're going to take it away, it's a couple of options there. Uh, I'll click on uh, video, this will bring up iTunes, it takes me to podcast there, I'll just click the refresh button. You can see here, Atho's presentation. Double click on that. Hang on. That's the second one. Let's go for the first one. So this is the stuff it's put on automatically, the intro. And this is obviously customizable to something your university. It's got the titles, it's picked up that metadata that I put in as well. So I'll go count down here. And hello, welcome to... Also notice the watermark down in the bottom right hand corner, AMU, did you see that there? Atherman University, so I think of everything. And then here, so we just used the default Apple uh, bits to uh, uh, tag at the front and the end and, and the watermark and so on. Obviously in your own environment you probably put your school's logo, uh, a few other different pieces there, you might need to have a legal notice or some copyright things as well. But I think there you can see the potential of uh, what you can do with that. Now I'll show you the, uh, the second one that we were already started. Uh, this one just came straight down. So this is one that um, Atho's gone away and has made himself previously. We didn't do the titles of this one. Bit of Punjabi MC to get you going, like the old Punjabi MC. And so on. Frightening stuff. So the great thing about this is um, that it sends the mail out automatically. So you can have that set up with your group so that the students all get the mail as soon as the processing's finished. So uh, in theory, they've probably uh, gone down to the uni tab and had a few beers, played some pool, then gone home. They'll get the email when they get home. They can download the lecture and then whatever they go off to do from there, go off to work or something like that, they can look at that on the train. Uh, they can also subscribe to these things through RSS as well. I won't show you that now, but that also means that uh, they don't necessarily, uh, if they skip that email, they can set up the iTunes so it pulls these things down automatically in the background. And that's the beauty of RSS. Some people think podcasting is just... Um, thank you for that is just having the files up on a web page. No, it's you subscribe to it and automatically when the lecturer adds new material, it will come to you. Uh, the file, you just click get, so you don't necessarily bring it down, but all the metadata comes down automatically. So you can see what's there and what it's about, and if you want it, use that bandwidth. So let's conclude, we're gonna be pretty much on time. So thank God for the network issues. Um, we'll be on time. Look, in conclusion, there are barriers, we've, we've, I think you'd all agree, between pre-service and in-service training and, and really uh, I think we need to address those and I think they are being addressed by many of the more innovative uh, ed faculties out there. Um, I think technology has a, a huge ability to assist in, in this role. Apple have quite a lot of, of resources available to you. This is the Apple Learning Interchange. 
and the Apple Learning Interchange makes it uh, makes available some modules uh, for for folks. In fact, the chap from AUT we saw there's some of his resources up there. iTunes U, when it comes to Australia, and even now using US resources and Canadian resources, uh, gives us a lot of resources, digital learning objects that can be redeployed and reused. Um, so here are some lesson plans from University of South Florida for K-12. Yes, somewhat US centric, but there's still a lot of resources out there. Our friends at MIT have uh, highlights for, for high school uh, in their open courseware, so they've put together a web page that brings the best of their material, and some of that's quite exciting. Uh, Prof Lewin uh, at MIT is a physicist who does very cool stuff on, on stage. I don't know if any of you have seen him, but he'll get out his little Faraday metal balls and make electricity jump around, and the students love him. He's got a cult following now, so he has a huge number of subscriptions to the iTunes U just to see this guy. And it's interesting to see that happen as you look at the different universities. Carnegie Mellon has a chap at the moment who has a cult following. Where he's a, a, a lecturer who's actually on the way out. He has pancreatic cancer. But he has a huge following because he's updating that with blogs. He's, he's still lecturing. He's getting out there. And, and it's just interesting to see uh, that, that sort of social networking. We can't predict what's happening. We get it wrong all the time. Uh, there are some organisations such as Gartner that spend, uh, in fact they make a lovely income from universities. IT directors at unis pay tens of thousands a year for, for, for Gartner reports. Now their hyper cycle for higher education is quite interesting because it, it looks at the technologies and where they are and how far off they are. In fact it has these wonderful marketing uh, jargon here with the technology trigger, peak of inflated expectations, trough of disillusionment, slope of enlightenment and plateau of productivity. <laughs> You'll see that they don't always get it right. Podcasting's in inflated expectations. I think that's nonsense. This is very US centric and there are hundreds of universities around the world doing stuff already. And, and some of the other technologies such as virtual environments, uh, whether or not they're that far off or not is open to debate. But there are folks trying to predict the future out there and certainly spending a lot of time trying to do that. I think with appropriate use of ICT, we can tick all the boxes that that Way and Webb spoke of, and I mentioned earlier in the talk. We've seen how I think wikis and podcasting can assist with collaboration, not only within the school but beyond, in content creation, digital multimedia creation, cultural exchanges, where wikis and, and collaborative tools like iChat, when we saw the students working with Japanese students, and net conferencing. These are certainly the higher order tools that are available here and now, have been for some years, and uh, we just wanted to make some of the new ones like Wiki and Podcast Producer known to you and remind you about some of the ones that have been around for five, six years, such as Our Life and iChat. Now, a reminder that the references uh, to, all, to the uh, publications and so on are all up on this URL, so feel free to jump on that uh, website and download.